Well, thank you. And thank you to all of you for allowing me to appear before this uh, ARIA formula meeting. My bona fides, if you will, in this matter are general, and that's the perspective from which I'd like to speak. I served for four years as the assistant to the chairman of the U.S. Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Colin Powell, roughly from 1989 to 1993. And then again, I served as his chief of staff and associate director of his policy planning staff when he was secretary of state, roughly 2000 and 2005. So that's the experience level I have, at the, if you will, in the highest corridors of power in Washington in the United States government. With that as a backdrop, let me say also that I know that the state capitals in the world, particularly Moscow, Beijing, Washington, Delhi, and others, use their influence whenever they can and whenever they feel it necessary to pressure international organizations. And I know that leading the pack in that regard is my country. I was there when we went around the world, for example, negotiating bilateral Article 98 agreements with every country we could get into in order to subvert the ICC and to make sure that no US troops operating in anyone's country could ever be prosecuted by the ICC. I was there when we brought undue pressure on the UN inspectors going into Iraq, not just once, but two or three times. I was there when Colin Powell gave that presentation at the United Nations. Indeed, I helped him to give it. I was there when we brought undue pressure on other international organizations to more or less influence them to make decisions that were in line with our policy preferences and in line with our security preferences. Every state capital in the world of consequence at one time or another has probably done that. I know Beijing, Moscow, Washington do it all the time. So that's the perspective I've coming from. And here's the second part of my perspective. This OPCW business really needs to get settled. We're never gonna have a perfect set of international organizations because of what I just described but we can do better. And when we make mistakes, tragic mistakes, which I think this is a case of, we need to try and correct them. And I applaud you for having this meeting and other things that are going on peripheral to it and ancillary to it that are trying to do this and all the people who are participating and trying to do it. Because here we have an egregious situation that uh, from everything I can see really calls on people of concern to straighten it out. And I like what uh, Hans just said about doing that, an independent commission and so forth. Um, at the same time, I realized too that it's difficult to do this sort of thing and to, in a sense, in a phrase, get away with it because the capitals I just enumerated and others will be trying to keep you from doing it. Um, there's no question in my mind that Bashar al-Assad has done some evil things. There's no question in my mind that Saddam Hussein did a lot of evil things. There's no question in my mind, my mind that Washington has done a lot of evil things and Moscow and Beijing too. Um, but here is a specific incident where we are undermining one of those organizations designed by all of us, I hope, to keep that from getting out of hand to keep things on an even keel, if you will, to make sure people are in fact held responsible for deeds that they do, whether they are purported as such in the media or not. The real facts, I've not been on the ground in Duma, but I've seen just hordes of photographs about the situation in Syria and about alleged chemical weapons use. And frankly, as a military professional, on each occasion, I was appalled. I was appalled at the media and the way they reported it. I was appalled at the sensation created around it and so forth. I knew that the United States Army, my army had spent time in the Mediterranean destroying, I think it was 600 metric tons of chemical weapons from Syria. Uh, did Bashar al-Assad put some aside? Possibly. But I know from my own authorities that uh, they thought that was a, a, in conjunction with the Russians, that that was a, a, a pretty thorough cleansing of chemical weapons in Syria. So my 
my antenna were up up acutely right away when someone claims that there was chemical weapons used in Syria and that it was the government of Syria that did it. And then when I saw the photographs and other things, I know a little bit about VX and sarin and chlorine and so forth. I, I saw that some of the claims were preposterous. They were preposterous, simply preposterous. When you see a man standing beside a crater, for example, um, and alleged VX or sarin was used, you know it's preposterous. The man would be dead. I know how effective these kinds of chemical weapons are. And I happen to know also what kinds of weapons Syria had in its stockpile. We had a dossier on that for a long, long time during the Cold War. So count me very skeptical on even any use of chemical weapons of consequence by the Syrian government in Syria. That's the start point. And then this occasion in April just seems to me to be a reflection of that plus an attempt to uh, subvert uh, an otherwise pretty sound organization, the OPCW. Uh, I know how we tried to influence the IAEA with regard to Iraq and other countries. I know how, as I said before, we tried to undermine the ICC, we being Washington. So I'm here as a, an impartial observer, if you will, but my real interest is in, as I think most of you, your interest is probably in, is keeping this international organization sound. The OPC, OPCW is a very important organization. It, is, it represents one of the few more heinous um, utensils of warfare, if you will, uh, that we have largely gotten rid of and I would like to see totally eradicated from the face of the earth. And I'm a military professional telling you that. There is no good to be had out of chemical weapons, period, over, conversation ended. So we need to make sure this organization has the power and the backing and the support to do its job and to make sure that the, we fulfill these promises that nation states make about not having these heinous weapons. So that's my perspective on it. That's why I'm here. Um, and I'd be glad to answer questions regarding that perspective if we have some later on. And thank you for having me again. Thank you. And let me say, first of all, that as a military professional, I welcome all the powerful, strong statements from each of the states against chemical weapons and against their use, their stockpiling, against their very existence. Um, warm words to this military professional's heart. Second, um, I thought, uh, I've not been in, uh, no experience with this uh, ARIA formula process, but I thought that it was conducted or set up so that we could do things on a little bit less usual, shall I say, basis. But what I've heard here today is everything but a discussion of the Duma incident and the OPCW's performance with regard to that incident. What I've heard is everything from Sergei Lavrov's promise to Ukraine to a tour de force or a tour de horribilis, if you will, of Syria's atrocious or alleged atrocious actions over the past few years. Um, and it has nothing to do really with the integrity of the OPCW, which to me seems at least has a high possibility of being very much undermined with regard to the Duma incident, April 18th. Um, so uh, that's the one thing I see about this discussion that was a little bit disconcerting is that we're not looking at that one particular incident where there is evidence that its integrity was undermined. One incident of undermining the OPCW or the IAEA or any other international organization's professionalism and conduct of its mission is bad uh, and should be looked at and should be investigated and the appropriate people should be reprimanded, uh, held to accountability or whatever. I know that's not something we do in the international community very often, if we did, my president, George W. Bush, would be up on war crimes, um, torture, clearly, a war crime. Um, maybe even the invasion of Iraq in 2003 was a war crime. Certainly, Kofi Annan uh, uh, made statements that it was. Uh, so, But I'm looking at the Duma incident, and I'm looking at the particulars of that incident, and I'm looking at what looks to me like 
a, a, a very convoluted process that produced a good report and then produced a report that was more politically influenced than it was uh, a report on the facts. So that's just the comment I have after listening to all of your conversations, which I enjoyed. Uh, and as I said, and I will repeat, I particularly enjoyed. My heart is throbbing from the fact that you all condemned chemical weapons and that you all seem to be sincere in that regard regardless of your political disposition. Um, and that's great. That's a wonderful thing. And I think the OPCW needs to be supported in all of its integrity with regard to policing that. Thank you.